look at you putting in that extra time on the weekend to do some DD. Righteous? I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and it is the weekend. It's August 19th, Friday. Now, what I do on this show is I like to look at OTC and penny stocks that I took notice of today and investors took notice of as well. We're looking at OTC and penny stocks. I'm looking at charts. I'm looking for runs. I'm looking for buzz on the internet. I'm looking for news. Now, that's news I've looked at over the last five days from the OTC market. The oldest is at the top newest is at the bottom. There is no public offerings or financials, nothing like that in there. Those are just activities that the companies are involved in. What I like to think of is the juicy morsels. So there's lots of good news there. Now, as I said, that's OTC news. Now, there's a lot of penny stocks that aren't on the OTC. Any stock under $5 is a penny stock, and it doesn't matter what market it's on. And there's a ton of those on the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ. And the great thing about that, well, a couple great things. One, they're free to trade almost all the time. I don't know of a whole lot of places that charge to trade on the major exchanges anymore. OTC market, I don't know about you, but I got to pay $14 round trip. So I like trading penny stocks that have no fees. Second of all, you've got an entirely different investor base up there. You got people who got money, lots of big hedge funds and all sorts of things. You never know who's going to invest and how much they're going to invest. And when you see a run up on a major market, they are some huge runs sometimes. So yeah, I'm intrigued by penny stocks on major exchanges by all means. Now, right now, we're over at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my number one go-to site whenever I do research on an OTC stock. Well, there's a lot of reasons for that, too. One, it's all free information. Two, I don't have to sign in. Three, it's updated every single day. And did you know, four, this company, OTC Markets, is on the OTC market as a stock that you can invest in. Absolutely is. And what's their business? You're looking at it. This is their business. Every one of these companies has to put their information up here and have to report to somebody and they have to have information validated with those green ticks I'm always talking about. This is their business. So this is what I like about this site. It's not just a site that's accumulating information for us and throwing it out there. No, this is their business to bring information to the investors. That's what this site was made for so that people who trade OTC stocks have a reliable place to get information. Ta-da! That's why I come to this site. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market fared today. We do have one great improvement. It's not over the top or anything, but hey, we got our share volume up over 10 billion. We gotta at least stay over 10 billion. That's a mental block of some sort. We have been bouncing under it, over it, under it, over it, and it's just becoming monotonous. So we're at 11 billion right now. Dollar volume is low. Our average is 2.1 billion. You hear me say that all the time. And I don't pay a whole lot of heed to the dollar volume, but I got to tell you, folks, the more money in the market, the better for everybody. So, yeah, I would like to see that come up. Of course I would. Trades, we've been running on the basement floor of about 250000 Now, we have been lower. It's been really rough sometimes. But right now, we're just skimming across the floor. We should be double that. We should be up at a half a million. But our market just isn't there. Maybe at the end of summer, maybe things will start to pick up. Uh, summer does tend to be the slowest time of season for trading on most markets as it is. So it was a slow day, but even on slow days, there are stocks ripping out there. And we got a few stocks today that definitely were catching the attention of investors, definitely were ripping, and definitely probably had more to give. But I'll let you be the judge of that. Come on, I'll show you what I got for you. I'll bet you my doggy's chew toy, you've seen this stock before. This is ticker PHIL, Phil, also known as Phi Group. Now, if you remember it and can't remember why, it was about a year ago, if memory serves me, that this had some huge runs. They got with the Luxembourg banks and they got a holdings company put together called the Asian Diamond Exchange. And contrary to what it sounds like, it was investment companies working over in Vietnam. 
They've got all these new free trade zones over in Vietnam that are just ready to explode. They just need people to invest in them. And you can build anything from factories to energy companies to roads. I mean, everything. It's open for investors. And it was running strong about a year ago. And then it's cooled down. And here in the last few months, they've had a few news presses coming out where they're putting together another deal with multiple companies. And it's all in Vietnam still. And then today, a news press came out with three big pieces of news in it that just exploded the market. The investors were really happy and the stock took off. So Phil finished today at 0 0.0019, over 216% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified. That's good, but we don't have a verified profile. And we would like to see that, especially if you're going to be buying Phil for a long hold. But if you're just going to be playing this for the run, a day trade, a short swing, don't worry about the verified profile. Won't stop your gains from coming in. Now, they also have independent directors. Now, this is primarily just for uplisting. Doesn't matter if they go to the QB, NASDAQ, wherever. When you uplist, you must have independent directors. Outside of that, there's really no reason to have them. So they may have an uplisting in the back of their mind. Now, we already know what the company does. They are working with investments in Vietnam. So what was the relative volume today? Kicking, kicking hard. Look at that. We went from 160 million, which isn't chump change. That's some good volume on a daily basis. 160 million shares. But today, she went over 2 billion shares. Now, agreed, that's just a little over 10 times her normal volume. We see bigger than that but we don't see a lot of stocks going into the billions of shares a day. That's what we're noticing here. It's hitting numbers that are rare. And when you find a company that is doing that, you need to pay attention to it. Everybody else is. And that's when you get runs like this. Lots of price action when you have a crowd of people around one company. Taking a look at our share structure. Ugh, it's a wreck. It's horrible. Wow. We have almost 30 billion in the float. That has got to be one of the highest I have ever seen. And that is only about half of what they have authorized. They could put double that on the market if they wanted. So yeah, it's a real high float. Financials. I don't believe they've been doing a whole lot here recently. No, uh, about a year ago, June of 2021, they did $61,000. We got three zeros here. We got to put behind any of the numbers down here. This may have just been a consultation fee for all I know. It doesn't look like real revenues. And looking at the quarterly, no. They're absolutely doing nothing right now. So the news that came out today is big. It is going to change this just like that. Let's go take a look at those disclosures. Anything new over here? Yeah, we've got a couple of 8Ks, but these have come out a couple of weeks ago, and I'm sure they do align up with the news. So let's go take a look at that news. Now, at first glance, all the news appears to be outdated, and it is actually. The most recent piece of news we have here is 2019, not what I'd call fresh, and everything underneath it is even older. However, every now and then, this site will go out and import news from other sites online, which is what they did in this case from the Globe Newswire. All of this news is current going back to May of this year. Now, all of this news, but one of them, which we will take a look at, is about the new direction of business that they have chosen, about the new companies that they're going to be doing business with. They've got to start making some revenues, and both of these companies look like they've already been making revenues for quite a while. So this should put them right into the game immediately. And all of this news builds on itself. They keep adding more fresh news on top, and it finally culminates to Phi Group, Inc. acquires majority interest in Tin Than Group which we're going to call TTG from this point forward. And this piece of news has more to say than just about the acquisition. There is some big news in there. Now, as I said, they're not abandoning the Asian Diamond Exchange. I know there hasn't been a lot of news, but there was a piece of news here in July. They tell us on July 21st, the company is pleased to announce that Vietnam-based AZ Holdings Investment has signed an agreement with the company to participate in Phylix Global Subfund, which is focused on real estate and infrastructure development and investment in Vietnam. In addition to this, AZ Holdings Investment has also signed a business cooperation agreement with 
P-H-I-L, to cooperate in the establishment of the buildings, facilities, and amenities all necessary for the operations of the Asian Diamond Exchange in Vietnam. So they are still moving forward with it. They've got a lot they're going to be doing, but these sort of investments are going to take time to mature, and they're not making any revenues right now, which is why they've got this all going on right now. So all of this news builds on itself, and each one of them give us a little more information. They do repeat a lot of it, and I'll try not to do that. So let's start with this very first one here. They talk about the two companies that they're going to be doing business with. I've already mentioned one, TTG, but I want to now talk about Da Nang Rubber, and we'll build from here. So this piece of news came out on June 23rd. They tell us that the company is pleased to announce that it has jointly inked an agreement with Da Nang Rubber, we're going to call them DRC, as well as TTG, to cooperate in increasing DRC's tire production and executing an innovative sales and marketing program that can get them $5.5 billion in revenue by 2025. Now, as I said, this is more about Denang Rubber, so let's just focus in on them. Here's a description of the company. Starting in 1945, DRC Tire Brand is growing to be a major tire manufacturer in Asia and the biggest brand tire in Vietnam for manufacturing all kinds of tires. Bicycles, motorcycles, buses, trucks, ATVs, off the road, agricultural tires. Vietnam DRC Tire Business has been exponentially growing since its beginning. For more than 45 years of development, DRC has established a strong and worldwide distribution network with over 80 countries and global sales of over $500 million, half a billion bucks. So they're already doing a half a billion, and they just got done telling us up here that they have a new plan, a new marketing strategy, where they're going to probably be at $5.5 billion by 2025. Just so you have a real clear picture of it, this is their website. I'm not going to go through it. Just want to show you their tires. They deal with all the truck tires for over the road semis, not just your front, but the trailer tires. You know, they got a lot of tires they got to deal with. These huge earth mover tires on these off road vehicles, motorcycle, even bicycle tires, and these agricultural combine and tractor tires. So they do it all. But they have focused in on a program to deal with semi-tractor trailer tires. They call it the DRC TTG Truck Tire Leasing Service Program. It comes complete with multi-function and an insurance package. And these are the benefits. So first off, you're going to save money on the cost of your tires, anywhere from 10 to 20%. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But they do stuff, so it's hassle-free for you. First off, the tires that you get from them come with these computer chips embedded in them. Yeah, really. Smart tires with mounted chips to track and manage your journey. I don't know exactly how they do it, but it must be worth something. As long as they keep it on the trucks and don't put it on my car, we're okay with that. There's no cost to change the tires. That's free. There's no environmental fees when replacing old tires. Maybe you've run into this. You go to get a tire uh, exchange, taken off your car, new one put on. They want an extra $10, $20, or $30 to dispose of your old tire. Yeah. So imagine when you're dealing with semi-trucks, how many tires they'd have to throw away and how much money they'd be giving away on the other end. No need to pay for periodic tire maintenance checks. No need to pay for buying tires when changing your new tires. No need to pay for tire insurance. There's no increase in your fuel using these tires, and the tires use clean and renewable energy, thus also benefiting the environment. So there's a little bit of introduction to Da Nang Rubber DRC. Now the next piece of news we got here. This came out July 1st. The company is pleased to announce that TTG and the company signed a definitive agreement for collaboration on June 30th, 2022. Here's a big piece of news here to establish a new subsidiary, Phylex Fidelity Global Group, known as PFGG. Now, according to their agreement, this is what TTG is going to do for them. Now, it's going to sound boring at first, but wait till we get to the last three and see if you see a complete picture coming together here. Number one, they are going to work on a global business developing for those least of smart truck tires under the DRC TTG brand by TTG. 
They are also going to develop high-tech agrigo industrial projects for closed circular energy from sorghum crops. I know it all sounds boring. Hang on, stay with me here. The development of renewable energy projects from domestic and industrial waste, from both currently generated waste and previous landfills that have been buried underground for many years, all using TTG's exclusive proprietary technology. So they're going to be able to transform landfills. That sounds big to me. Now it gets real interesting. Number four. Development of global renewable energy projects from discarded tires using TTG's exclusive proprietary technology. So you've got DCR selling tires and taking the tires back and they're not charging anybody for that. And then you got this company that has some sort of special renewable energy project that they actually use tires for. That sounds pretty smart to me. Now it gets even better. Construction of low-income housing using areas of previous waste landfills that are cleared by TTG's exclusive proprietary technology. And assisting TTG Group and affiliates to access capital sources and list on major international stock exchanges such as the NASDAQ stock market or the New York Stock Exchange. So they want to spin out TTG, which builds up to our very last piece of news. This came out today. Phi Group is pleased to announce that the company has signed an agreement to acquire 51% of TTG. So now they're in charge of it for a cash price of 60 million US dollars. The closing of the transition is scheduled to occur by October 4th of this year. Now, another important piece of information, Phi Group will choose one of its subsidiaries to be the holder of the 51% equity ownership in TTG and intends to take this subsidiary public in the United States. That's a spin out, folks. That's when you get free shares for a company up on the major exchange. Now, we just saw they created a whole new subsidiary there, PFGG, and they want to put TTG somewhere. So that's probably, not that it makes a whole lot of difference at this point, but that's probably where it's going to end up. And they tell us here, Felix Global Group Inc. has also secured, and this is huge, folks. The company has secured $3 billion equity investment commitment from the Golf Corporation Council. $3 billion. That is gigantic. Oh, and by the way, they're going to use the... Uh, Three billion dollars to pay that sixty million dollars so that they can acquire fifty one percent of TTG. So they've got a good thing going on here. So they've got one company that's selling tires and got a lease program in 80 different countries they're going to be doing this so that semi trucks don't have to worry about all of that hassle they're going to take care of all of those how many semi trucks are out there that sounds like real good business then they've got another company here that actually and we didn't get to read that so let's read the description for ttg ttg group is a pioneer conglomerate with decades of experience in providing renewable energy and reducing global emissions covering the following fields environment energy and closed circular agro industrial energy it is supplying energy right now from from renewable fuels to more than 40 industrial plants in vietnam and around the world the company specializes in sustainable development of closed circular agro-industrial energy by growing sorghum crops in order to create clean energy source and reduce global emissions. It also transforms old waste dumps into new environmentally friendly urban residential areas. TTG currently holds 10 patents and 10 new valuable industrial solutions yet to be registered for patents. And this is the company that has some sort of way of creating renewable energy from tires that they'll get from DCR. It all sounds very smart to me. It's going to bring money in immediately for them. Obviously, it's a whole new arm, a whole new division for this company, and they plan on doing a spin out. It all sounds great. That's why it ran today, especially this one. I love that one. Securing $3 billion in equity investment. $3 billion? Holy cow. What was the uh, market cap of this company? $19 million. $19 million, and they secured $3 billion. All right, folks, let's go take a look at that chart.
So now we're looking at PHIL on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform. If you need one or you just want to back up, go on over to TD Ameritrade. Sign up for a free trading account. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like for free. So this is PHIL, but it's a big picture. It goes back more than a year. But I wanted to show you, as I was saying earlier, this was running a year ago. So right here, she was flat up until Christmas of 2020. That's our first bump and jump right there. And then it just went nuts. The Asia Diamond Exchange was in the news and she was making these tremendous highs over and over again for quite a while she was running. This right here, she got up to almost two cents in June of 2021. And from there, she has been falling, falling really, really hard. Coming down to our six month, four hour view. Now our high is at 0067 and our low is 0004. My goodness. I'd like to say she's undervalued, but she's not making any money, right? She's got no revenue. So what is she worth? She's got potential of investments paying off maybe five years down the road, but we need something now. So she has been under that 200 the entire time until today. This is the first time she has broke it in six months. Technicals are ripping, folks. Look at this. RSI straight up, MACD straight up, PPO straight up. MACD and the PPO are very much alike. MACD works with the price. The PPO works with the percentage of the price. And they're just up to the stars right now. Coming down to that 20-day, one-hour view. <laughs> wow, you'd think she was off the market. I mean, seriously. But now she's down here at the triple zeros. So you're going to get this. Uh, picket fence is what I like to call them. Some call them barcodes. Just up and down, up and down, dee 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 dee, and going nowhere. Until today's news, wow, she just shot up like a rocket. Took off from uh, yesterday's close looks to be about triple zero five, and it hit a high here of double zero two. So that's four hundred percent gains, folks. That is from yesterday's close. I do believe that was yesterday. Yes, it was. Yesterday's close until today. If you would have caught that high, that was 400%. Technicals, everything is still ripping and tripping. I mean, we're in the overbought here at 80. Uh, our direction of our trend is strong. That's not changing. PPO and MACD are up and up. Really liking this. Five day, five minute. All right, as you would expect nothing going on and there was nothing going on until what time we got here that is five minutes to ten. Five minutes to ten i guess that's when the news came out bingo she was running all day she had a little bit of dip here really broke the 10 was getting close to the 20 but didn't hit it hit a nice high here i could see how most people would have thought this was the end of the run here but we see who's in charge she bounced off of that 20 and took off again. And right now, she looks like she is still riding up on that 10. Our PPO does show just a wee bit of, bit, a wee bit of pullback right here. Uh, trend looks like it might be changing, actually. MACD is showing the same size. It looks like there is just a tendency of a pullback right now. I want to look at the one minute. All right, that is because she started going sideways. Right here, she had quite a few minutes of sideways activity. One, two, she had a dip, three, four. Well, she did hit a high bubble here. So we had a pullback for that. It came back up to that high and has been bouncing off that high over and over and over and over and over and over again. So no, it doesn't actually look weak. It looks like it's breaking the ice. It's just going to get over that high and start taking off. I honestly, folks, I think the technicals show enough heat that that stands that the technicals are not cool, but even more than that, I think Phil has a large following. I think there was a lot of potential in the investment of Asia Diamond Exchange, but I do like the new businesses that they're doing with DCR and TTG. This is very, very interesting, and I think it's gonna be big because, well, how many trucks are in the world? How many trucks are on the road? Wow, they could get a heck of a lot of business. It could be very appealing to these companies to have a hassle-free lease on their truck tires. So I would definitely be watching Phil, and I mean watching this on Monday. I think she could easily take off on Monday. And, well, 
I do have some supports and resistances drawn here. These go back as far as you need to go back. I've drawn these all the way up to 0032, and right now we're at 002, roughly. I think it's going to break that. I don't think this is going to be the high at all. I think this is enough exciting news with the $3 billion security investment with the company now. I mean, come on. That is really huge. So I would keep my eye on Phil. Don't underestimate what could go on here. Next stock we're taking a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. Now, if you recall, I told you earlier, any stock under $5 qualifies as a penny stock. Doesn't matter what market they are on. All of them are fair game. So we're looking at AGLE on the NASDAQ. I believe this is pronounced Aglia Biotherapeutics. Now, as the name suggests, this is a biotechnology company. They're working with human enzymes. They're helping people with rare metabolic diseases that have limited treatment options. And today, they had a filing and a news press come out about one of their drugs that has made some serious headway. So there was a lot of excitement around this company today. She finished the day at 91 cents with over 80% gains. Now, 91 cents is a danger zone price on the NASDAQ. They have a minimum price requirement. You can't go under a dollar, at least not for too long. You stay down there too long, you will get a warning from the major exchange, the NASDAQ, and they'll tell you, you got to get your price over a dollar and stay over a dollar for at least 20 days, or we will kick you off the major exchange and throw you down to the OTC, down to the dungeon with you. And that can happen. So we're going to watch that price and hope that kicks up. I haven't seen a warning come from NASDAQ yet. So what was the relative volume around this company's news and filing today? Well, she normally does 3.2 million. Today she did 78 million. That's a ton of extra shares to be out. Share structure. All right, this is a little interesting. We've got 50 million in the outstanding. So they tell us here. They don't give us the unrestricted shares, which is where I get my float, and they don't even give us a float. So I did have to go to Google and start searching. Now, when I go to Google searching for floats, I look for three or four sites that have the same number, just to make sure I'm getting an accurate number. And even that's not a guarantee. Well, I couldn't find this one. Every single one I found said that the outstanding shares was over 60 million, and they kept putting the float at about 51 or 52 million. Well, there's not that many outstanding. So all I can tell you is that the float is under 50 million. That's really all I can say. Financials, is this company making any money? Well, look at that. I'm really surprised. You know, most of these biotech companies are research and development. They're still looking for a drug to put on the market. So they're spending money left and right searching for that home run. But this one's already got money coming in. At the end of last year, they did, remember those three zeros? They did $18.5 million. Now, what's interesting here is that there's no cost of revenue. How do you do that when you sell products, sell drugs? It's got to cost you something for the ingredients, for the electricity to run the machines, to make the drug, packaging. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. There's no cost of revenue, and they got to keep it all. Quarterly. Well, it's not a fluke. Look at this. Uh, they're making money all the way along. There was a lot of money a year ago. It has gotten less and less. I am also aware of the fact that they had a public offering back in May, and they got $45 million out of that as well. So they do have money in the bank to be working with right now, and it looks like they're bringing in money, and it isn't costing them anything to do it. It's the kind of money we like to make, isn't it? Disclosures. Well, I told you they've got a couple new disclosures. And this 8K here was about that public offering where they got $45 million. And then you have the 8K today. Let's jump on into that one. This is the 8K that just came out. And we don't have to read much. They pretty much tell you everything you need right here. On August 18th, 2022, Aglia Biotherapeutics announced a marketing authorization application for Pergzi Arganase for the treatment of Arganase 1 deficiency, which has been submitted to and validated by the European Medicines Agency. The MAA was submitted by Amedica Pharmaca AB, the company's commercialization partner for Pergzil Arganase in certain countries in Europe and the Middle East. Now, just so you know what this disease is about, I don't want to get too deep here. But they tell us that arginase deficiency is an inherited metabolic disease in which the body is unable to process arginine, a building block of protein. 
It belongs to a group of disorders known as urea cycle disorders. This occurs when the body's process for removing ammonia is disrupted, which can cause ammonia levels in the blood to rise. Symptoms may include feeding problems, vomiting, poor growth, seizures, and stiff muscles with increased reflexes, which they call spasticity. People with arginase deficiency may also have developmental delay, loss of developmental milestones, and intellectual disability and can cause you to die at a young age. So that's what's going on. And even looking at the news, that's pretty much everything that they say with a lot of extra words. We don't want to get into all that. But this is what's going on with this drug. It has received multiple regulatory designations, including rare pediatric disease, breakthrough therapy, fast track and orphan drug designations from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration as well as orphan drug designation from the European medicines agencies. So basically you're talking about a drug that has no competitors and since there's nothing else out there to choose from, this is the only option. So they'll put it out there earlier before all the phases are done. They'll get it out there earlier so people can start using it. And that is what's got this thing running. Let's go take a look at that chart. You knew exactly what we were going to be looking at, a six-month, four-hour chart for AGLE. How did you know that? <laughs> we got a high back here of $6.85 six months ago, and not more than two weeks ago, we hit a low bubble of $0.37. Cents. What a drop. Speaking of drops, look at that drop right there from 685 to 348. That is like 50% drop. Now, I have no clue why she fell. I'm sure it was bad news about some phase trial or a delay, but she has been falling ever since then. She had one attempt to break over the 200 without any success, and we had another abrupt fall right here, like we did six months ago. Now, what we're looking for since she's starting to climb now is for her to get back to that resistance distance of about a dollar 51 she has creeped across the bottom and is now pushing up so we're looking for it to bounce on that a couple times and then get up over it and start to run now she's already changed her trend there is no doubt about that she bounced off of the low bubble here she was underneath every sma worked her way across them and is now on top of the 50 here with her celebration price bars to show us confirmation two big bars success she did pull back bounced off that 50 again, and then went back to her climb, slowly but surely. And then here in the last two days, she had a breakout. That's all you can say. She got up over the 200, hasn't had a whole lot of luck doing that over the last six months, and look at the size of those price bars. Is that confirmation enough for you? Lots of volume in the last two days, and the technicals are great. The MACD and the PPO, which is the percentage price oscillator, these two are cousins. They're both pointing up, looking real good. Our RSI has had a pullback, as you would expect, because the price has fallen here. Let's take a look at the 20-day, one-hour view. So there's your low bubble. She is climbing above it. Now on the one hour chart, she's breaking the 200 at this point. And there's your large bars to give you confirmation. She did test it and then went back to that climb. And as I said, these last two days, she's had all her growth. However, it doesn't look like yesterday she had a lot of growth. Not much on Thursday. Let's come in closer so we can see that. All right, so you can see barely right here are two little green bars that broke the 200. That was yesterday at the end of the day, but once the bell went off, she took off. I don't know if the news came out at that time or not. I really don't, but the volume got very strong, and she shot from $0.50 cents up to $1.20. That's a 70% gain right there. She gave it all away by the time the bell came into play this morning. She actually fell under the 200 again, but now the 200 is a lot higher. She got under that, jumped to about a dollar three, dollar four here, fell, hit that high again, has fallen again, and is struggling to stay above the 200 right now. I can't say it looks promising at this point. Technicals aren't very strong. The SMAs are all going flat line. She may have had her run. However, with drugs, it's very difficult to tell. 
Now, normally if they get a full-fledged FDA approval, you can get multiple days of runs. If it's about cancer, you can get multiple days of runs. If they get a drug on the shelves of Rite Aid or Walmart, you can probably get multiple days of runs. But I don't know about this. They do have special designations now as orphan drugs and all this, not only in our country, but in Europe. And once that happens, the drug can get out there to be used. I just don't know how far it's going to go. But I would keep my eye on AGLE. She could have a surprise bounce trying to get back up to that resistance right there and we are now at what 91 cents and that goes to a dollar 50 so that would be a nice increase just getting up to that point and that might be a good place to actually sell as she bounces on that because I don't know if she's going to come back down I don't know if she's going to break through and protecting your gains is what we're after we're not trying to get as much as we can we're trying to get what we can when we can and the last stock we're taking a look at is in the energy sector, which is exploding. Lots of money being made in that sector right now. Now, I'd like to tell you TGLO is in the green energy sector, but it's not. It is in liquid natural gas, which is going through the roof right now. I know because that's what I use to heat my house. So TGLO did not have any news come out today. They didn't have any filings, but you see we've got a nice run going on. Fact is, she's had a couple nice news presses in the last couple of months. Huge news presses about big deals that they're making, about huge revenues they're going to be bringing in. And they need them, folks. Right now, they are a shell company not bringing in any money whatsoever. So it is big news. Now, they finished the day at 20 cents with about 50% gains. They're on the pink tier. They're current, but they do not have a transfer agent verified. They do not have a verified profile. Now, those are the green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. They're very important, and they are. But in saying that, you don't have to worry about your company being yanked off the open market because it hasn't got them. It's just you're missing out on that validated information, which is always nice to have with a pink, especially if you're considering it for a long hold. Now, if you're just playing this for a day trade or a short swing, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Now, she is a shell company. They've got a lot of things set up right now, but they're not generating any revenues. And I'll tell you more about the business as we go along and look at the news. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she normally does about 140,000. Today, she did just over a million. It's not crazy big numbers, but that is about six or seven times her normal volume. So there was an increase today. Share structure. All right, we have 441 in our outstanding. They don't give us the unrestricted. They don't give us the float. So I had to go do a search. And if memory serves correctly, this was 148 million. Could be 128 million. Either way, it was a pretty decent float. Not super duper low or anything, but not a bad float. Financials. Well, you know we're going to see zeros across the board here because they're a shell company. They're not doing anything. Disclosures. This is where our DD really comes in handy. Now, remember I told you that this company, TGLO, had big news come out over the last couple of months. Some big deals where they're going to generate large revenues. Well, if you go out looking for that news, you're not going to find it. <laughs> Nothing personal. What I mean to say is the ticker TGLO and the company name The Globe are not even mentioned in any of these press releases. Not once. So how in the heck are we supposed to know that this is the company's news? Because it's their subsidiaries. And the way I learned about the subsidiaries was actually jumping into one of their 10 Qs. I jumped into this one, scrolled down underneath all of the finances, got down to the description of the company and discovered this. On December 20th, 2017, Delphin Midstream entered into a common stock purchase agreement with the company and bought over 312 million shares of common stock, giving them almost 71% control of the company. There's your controlling interest company right there, Delphin Midstream. Now, they also mention here, as of June 30th, 2022, as reflected in our accompanying condensed balance sheet, our current liabilities exceed our total assets. We prefer to avoid filing for protection under the U.S. Bankruptcy Code. This news is really big news. There's lots of money sitting on the table. I think they're going to easily avoid this bankruptcy. Now, what does this company exactly do? Well, picture's worth a thousand words. This is the company's website. I got my big head out of there so you can see everything clearly. This is what they do. They are a leading developer of LNG export projects in North America using floating LNG technologies. 
Now think about that. They're not building facilities on the land, on the continent. They don't have factories and processing centers there. They've got them built onto the ships so they don't even have to load the ships. It's already on the ship. All they got to do is process it and take it to wherever they are going. They tell us that Delphin LNG is a brownfield deep water port requiring minimal additional infrastructure investment. They've already invested all the money to build all this out to support up to four of the FLNG vessels producing up to 13 million tons of LNG per annum. Delphin purchased the UTOS pipeline, the largest natural gas pipeline in the Gulf of Mexico in 2014 and then submitted a deep water port license application in 2015. Delphin received a positive record of decision from the Maritime Administration and approval from the Department of Energy for long-term exports of LNG to countries that do not have free trade agreements with the United States. Now, I said the company had subsidiaries, meaning more than one. Delphin LNG is one of them. The other one that they have is Avocet LNG. Both of these companies own pipelines. These are them. Both pipelines come off of the coast of Louisiana out into the Gulf of Mexico about 40 miles and hook up to their vessels. And this is where they do all their work. And they're going to be making some huge money. Let me show you the first piece of news we got here from July 23rd. So as I said, we're not going to see the company's name or their ticker here. Delphin Midstream Inc. has finalized a binding liquefied natural gas sale and purchase agreement with Vital, the America's based affiliate of Vital, which is the world's largest independent trader of energy. In addition to the sale and purchase agreement, Vital has finalized a strategic investment in the company. So they're not just doing business with our company, they're investing in this company as well. And then you have a second piece of news that came out here August 9th. Centrica to buy LNG from Delphin Midstream. UK-based energy services and solutions provider Centrica has signed a deal with U.S. LNG export projects developer Delphin Midstream to buy LNG. On August 9th, Centrica and Delphin Midstream announced the signing of a Heads of Agreement. Under the Heads of Agreement, Centrica will purchase 1 million tons per annum over the next 15 years. Now, how much is that worth? Well, they tell us down here... Where is it? Right there. That Centrica said it was working to bolster the UK and Ireland's energy security both now and over long term. So, last month they signed an additional, it's virtually $4 billion American dollar supply agreement with Equinor and a $7 billion agreement with Delphin. Now, if the last one was for a half a million, that one's going to be for about $3.5 billion. Roughly, this one here is for $7 billion. Holy cow, folks, we're talking over $10 billion worth of contracts between two companies in the last couple of months. That is a huge amount of money. And what is the uh, market cap for this company currently? We're at $88 million for a market cap, and we just got two contracts there, which one we know is worth $7 billion. I'm not sure what the other one is worth, but if it's half as much material, half as much fuel, it should be about half as much money, $3.5 billion. That is a ton of money, and money is what makes these businesses fly. Let's go check out that chart and see where it's flying to. Well, I got to say, this six-month, four-hour chart for TGLO looks like an amusement park to me. A lot going on there. See, here's us walking up to the gate, just minding our own business under the 200, getting a little excited the closer we get, and then boom, we get on the first roller coaster on March 23rd. And this is actually the first time they mentioned the veto contract, the one that we read on July 23rd, where they were going to get a half a million tons of LNG. Well, there was a huge jump here. This went from about nine cents to 25 cents, almost 300% gains. She then fell back to the 50 day SMA, bounced hard off of that, hit a new high, and then crashed. Went all the way down to a new low of almost a nickel from 26 cents. Bounced off that low, trying to get over the 200 again without success, and fell down to the 200 day haul. Now, that's a lot like the 200 day SMA takes 200 days, averages them all together, comes up with a number, but it gives more credence to current prices. So you normally find this line closer to the price. Bounced right off of that, and for what? The last week, it has been climbing until today, without any fresh catalyst, it launched. 
Technicals are strong. Our PPO is pushing up. Our MACD is pushing up. Our RSI is firmly up into the overbought at 84. Let's look at that 20-day, one-hour view. So she hit that low bubble and was slowly working her way up. There's your confirmation bar, right? She's on top of the 50. We get a big bar. Bars are a little bit bigger up here. She's now floating on the 10 and climbing. And today she took off. Technicals are even better on the hour. Everything looks perfect. If things are all pointing up, you can't go wrong. So this looks dynamite. <laughs> five day, five minute. All right, all we have is an uptrend here. Low bubble bounced off of the 50 perfectly came up and has been pushing up ever since. Today, our volume started to increase right in the middle of the day. I didn't see any catalyst. Maybe there were some tweets. She hit a high here of 25 cents and pulled down. Now, I'm going to draw my lines here from the bottom of the surge to the top of the surge, and I'm going to find the middle. Now, you can do this mathematically, or you can just eyeball it. Close enough really is good enough. What I'm looking for is to see if she keeps at least half of her gains. There's 100% up to the high bubble, and there's 50%. Anything underneath that is less than 50%. You can see she is respecting that. She is bouncing off of that 50% mark right there, and now with a very big bar pushing up hard. Technicals, looks like things are about ready to turn. As she's been falling, everything's been falling. You can see that. So this little turn here coming up, all of them, shows that she is probably ready to continue going. Look, folks, that's a lot of money. Virtually $10 billion. I know it's $7 billion. They didn't say $3.5 billion for the other one. I'm just doing simple math there. So roughly $9 to $10.5 billion worth of contracts sitting on the table with this company right now. And they're set up. They're ready to do business. So I would definitely keep my eye on TGLO. It looks like she's ready to give another bounce. She has been climbing for the last week with a lot of growth today. I don't know what Monday is going to do, but if you turn your back on her, I'll bet you that's the day she runs again. Let me express my appreciation if you happen to be one of those folks out there spending your free time on your weekend actually watching this video. I certainly appreciate it. So we've covered three stocks here that all have catalysts, all have money on the table, all have deals still happening, right? You got Phil, they've just made two deals with two companies, dealing with tires, bringing in revenues. That's just getting going. Then you got the biopharmaceutical company. Their drug has gotten all sorts of designations on two continents to get out there for people to use. And then TGLO, holy cow, almost $10 billion worth of contracts sitting on the table right now now. Yeah, they've already run. Are they done running? I don't think so, folks. Those are big deals that have just started happening right now and have lots of potential to develop as time goes on. So you may get some good fast runs here in the next few days, or you may get some good strong growth over the next few weeks. DD is going to keep you in touch with all of it. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.